to even think about sending you down or anything like that. You know, all you can do is go out there, and he's pretty much done a decent job. He plays a decent first base, and he can play a little bit of outfield, and he's had some timely hits, and he's done some <laughs> – it's done some positive things. Right. Gotten hot here of recent. Right. You know, and been swinging the bat real good. Well, again, uh, he came in as a throwing in that deal. Yeah. But he – I'm wrong, wrong with throw-ins no, now. No. Now, Tommy, w w the first time you were sent down to the minor league, mm -hmm. you remember that? I mean, I mean – yeah, I mean, I, my first big league camp, you know, when you first get sent down, you never got really sent down before. You know, right. You, you, and you said, I mean, you were told that, hey, you have a good camp. You got the opportunity to possibly make this team. You know, I give up one run in 23 innings and didn't make the team. Right. <laughs> that was pretty disappointing. But I needed to go down to AAA because I wasn't ready. Yeah. So, I mean, and yeah, I figured that out pretty quick. Yeah. Did Bobby Cox bring you into his office and – what did he say to you? I'm trying to remember who. Well, I think it was Chuck Tanner back then. Chuck Tanner. Yeah, Chuck Tanner was with it, uh, but uh, they had it. But I, I, it wasn't. It wasn't that hard of a thing, you know. He said, you know, you just got to go and continue to go because you're so young, and and I mean, you had a great. You know, if we just go on what, the way you pitched here, you know, yeah, I mean, you deserved the right to be with us, but. There's a little bit more goes to it, that goes into it than that, and that's what I had to buy into. Even though it gave me a little fuel for the fire, you know, I ended up getting my lunch handed to me in AAA that year, for the most part. And I, you know, it's a growing up process, you know, and 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 I learned from that, and and and, and end up using that to help me, you know. Tommy, so along help me grow up to be a man, right? You know? Along the way, who really gave you the confidence to be a big league pitcher? Oh my God, um, confidence. I mean. I had a lot of people in my corner that were rooting for me. Uh, but, I mean, bottom line, it comes down to me going out on the mound and doing the job myself. It was, I mean, I had to go out there and, and do the job and, 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 and grow in the confidence in, that I could do, know that I can do it. And, and, and when you start, and what gives you that, it, you're putting forth the effort to work in, in your practice and your side sessions and stuff, and you're having, you're seeing some success when you do pitch, and that success breeds confidence. Confidence breeds success. It works hand in hand a little bit, you know. Even though I mean, sometimes I mean, you, I mean, every time I was, you know, one of the top three in the league in ERA, but you still got a losing record, you know. I mean, it, it's mean you're lo losing a lot of close games, low scoring games, and stuff like that because you pull the Cole Hamels, the team don't score for you, you know, and, and you pitch a great ball game. Sometimes that happens, you know. And a lot of times numbers are one thing. I mean, wins and losses are one thing, and and. You know, but it's about how you pitch, and I mean, and that's when you know, knowing how you pitch and your peers know how you go about your work, and and, and go about that gives you to, they know, they see that and they value you for that, and that, and to, for your teammates to tell you how much I mean, how they feel about you, that's a huge thing. That makes you feel like you, I mean, like you belong, but also you grow as a baseball player too that way. Tommy, you had the opportunity to play with John Smoltz. Yes, he was a starter. He was yeah. a reliever, mm -hmm. back to a starter. That is not an easy no. undertaking, is it? No, no, no. I mean, uh, I pitched a little bit. Uh, I mean, not to his caliber as far as being a closer and stuff like that, being to put in a pin. But uh, in his, you know, uh, his level, you know, what he did is pretty amazing, you know, uh, to be all-stars and, and, and both. And, you know, uh, I mean, it helped to me. It really helped him get into the Hall of Fame doing, I mean, doing both. I mean, because he went through the arm injury and stuff that I think sort of got him out of the rotation. But to come back, he had to pitch in the bullpen to kind of get him going. And he was an asset, really, unless and just eating up, uh, just do, pitching innings. He ended up being a closer because his stuff was that good. You know, I mean, he ended up coming back from it. You know, and I mean, when you got stuff like that, you got to, you know, you know, that's a credit to him to come back and being able to pitch like that after those type of injuries you had. How do you handle Andrew Painter? I mean, you went through arm surgery, shoulder mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. How do you hold, handle this kid? And well, you get, did they give him too much at 19 years old, trying to learn the cutter and all that? I mean. Good question. Uh, I mean, because you, like you said, he's 19. Um, and he's not, you know, he's not six foot or six two. He's six seven. So obviously he's grown a ton, you know. In, in recent history, you know, so to me, his body's still filling out, and he's still, to me, I think he's still, uh, he was still susceptible to, to things growth plate wise around the elbow and the shoulder and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, now, now you don't play around with a guy with that talent like that. You make sure he's healthy, 
you got to make sure he gets back to healthy. And, and what I mean by that, yeah, he might be healthy, but to hel- I'm talking healthy mentally too because that's the other part of it. You know, once you're hurt like that, now it's all about, okay, you got to show yourself you can throw and stuff without hurting or, you know, uh, and, and, and do, do some of the things like you used to, and that's a process you have to go through. So and you can't rush that either. So it's got it's one of those things. It's got to take. It's going to take a little time, and 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 that's what you want them to take his time. Let it happen on its on its own time. You know, don't try to force it to come back. You know, uh, to do that because he you want him in this organization with that type of stuff, what he's capable of doing um, for years and years to come. You know, you don't want to lose a guy. You know, like that. You want him. You know, give him every every chance to be healthy and let him lose it on the field up in the big leagues, you know, or work his way back. Let him get healthy. How difficult was it for you when you had surgery to come back? What's that process like? Well, I mean, it's the same way I just sort of described it a little bit. The big hurdle was the mental side. I mean, mental side, if you're physically able to. My little situation was a little bit different with, you know, what I had wrong with my shoulder. It wasn't an easy fix, you know. Um, if the good Lord said you had, you know, gave me uh, uh, two options, you know, or, you know, he said you're going to have to have one, you're going to have to have a major surgery. Which one do you want, elbow or shoulder? I would have chose elbow uh, if I could because the shoulder is a beast. Um, there's something about it that, uh, you know, uh, I know I, it, I wasn't never the same, you know, coming back. No matter how, what I did or anything, it just wasn't the same. Um, and it, I couldn't stay healthy. And, uh, and that, was, that was the huge thing for me. Uh, but uh, the big key, I think, of what I said was uh, the mental side of it is proving to yourself it wasn't going to hurt when you're through. You know, and 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 then and then you got to re- reuse. I mean, relearn your command and where your hands. But I mean, there's a lot of different things that plays in your command. Come back. Is it going to come back? And you see a lot of things with the elbow too. The guys they come back with great arm strength, but still the command's not there. It takes some time. You know, it takes some time to do, and that's. It's just you got to go through the process, and you know and they got a they got a pretty good idea, you know, with the elbow how things work. And I mean, is it always a foolproof you can come back better or whatever? No, but you got a better, I think, a better chance, you know, with an elbow, and I think you do with a big time shoulder thing. Wow, what about Suarez? Now he's been stretched out. I like what I've seen so far. I got can pitch, man. Yeah, he it, can pitch. Yeah, it, he's your true pitcher, you know. And especially when he's commanding that changeup like he did the other day, it started coming around. And that just adds that, that arsenal that he does have, that four pitch mix that he's got, you know, makes it even better. You know, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's, a, I mean, I don't, he's not a prototypical lefty because he throws hard enough to, you know, get your attention. And and then the off speed pitch just makes that play up even more, you know. And plus he has that, compet- he's got that quiet competitive nature to him. He's like that guy, you never see, he never, gives it away in his facial expressions or underneath, but he pitches with that fire. So like Greg Maddox and then Greg used to, and Greg was one of the meanest, nastiest dudes you want to behind that glove you ever see, and you never see in his face like glad and those dudes pitched with the same type of stuff. You know, I mean, that's a, it may, it's a huge thing, you know, to have that, that, that type of intense intensity like that. I'm just glad he's, he's where he's at the point now where he's at on that healthy, that healthy side pitching and trending that way like we got him now because we need him. You know, we need him, you know, uh, to pitch like – I mean, it's hard to pitch like he is all the time. But, you know, what him and Walker have done the past few times, hey, man, you, I mean, you got to love what you're seeing in your, your three and four guys right now. No question about it. Tommy, this Phillies team, are they ready to make their big move now? Well, I think they're playing good baseball. They're already moving. They just need to continue beating the guys they need to meet, need to beat. And uh, find some find the ways to win series when they play the guys like the Braves and stuff like that. You know, don't split. Find a way. I mean, if they play a three game series, it'd be great to win two out of three. And you know, every now and then, hey, don't be afraid to sweep somebody. Yep. <laughs> As well. Tommy, again. we we had a great show today. Oh, it was really, awesome. Really awesome. enjoyed it from Keenan's Irish Pub here in North Wildwood uh, on the SEPTA Baseball Insider Show presented by. BCWSA. I know you're the spokesman for them. I remember tomorrow night, the bull session, uh, live from Park Casino, Doug Clemens, the special guest, you and Dan Baker will co-host the show. Got to thank our great producer on site today, Gus Barber, did an outstanding job. And back at yeah. the station. And his, Brooke, Dan, and his, and his dad, dad and brother. Absolutely. They came down <laughs> for the day. 
and Brooke St. Ives back at the station uh, under the uh, working the controls. Until next Sunday on the Baseball and 